Hello, welcome to Neil Scribe. I love learning how other countries innovate, especially to overcome challenges. This is why I'm fascinated with Norway's $47 billion superhighway project, because it will allow it to overcome an incredible challenge, and that is geography. Norway's landscape is dominated by the Scandinavian mountains and a coastline filled with deep fjords and glaciers, creating an extraordinarily complex geography consisting of over 50,000 islands. Because of this, two-thirds of its population lives in the southern region and makes traveling to the northern areas difficult. The 1,100km stretch from Kristensen to Trondheim takes 21 hours with an average speed limit of 48km an hour and requiring 7 ferry crossings that can take as much as 45 minutes. This project will cut the travel time by half by filling the road gaps in massive fjords, eliminating the need for ferry crossings. So we're going to explore each of the fjord crossings starting with the Bakhnia Fjord. The Bakhnia Fjord crossing will feature the epic Rogfast subsea road tunnel slated for completion in 2026. It will be the longest and deepest subsea road tunnel in the world, stretching 27 kilometers and almost 400 meters below sea level. The system will consist of twin tunnels, each 10.5 meters diameter, supporting two lanes of traffic. And the tunnel will have its own infrastructure to keep it operational, including 51 high-voltage technical rooms, 17 pump stations, and 480 emergency kiosks. And the construction will require the excavation of up to 8.5 million cubic meters of rock. Alright, next is the massive Bunia Fjord with waters up to 600 meters deep. Engineers have spent years researching possible solutions, including two different types of submerged floating tunnels. And in September 2019, the government selected a single curved pontoon bridge. Once complete, it will be the world's largest floating bridge. At over 5.4 kilometers, the Bjornarford Bridge will be almost twice as long as the Golden Gate Bridge. On top of its length, the bridge also features 50 meter clearance for ship traffic on one side. And it will consist of 40 steel pontoons spaced 100 meters apart, serving as floating foundations for the bridge. Now notice the curved shape of the bridge, this is vital to keeping it afloat because it helps the bridge resist lateral forces. Alright, now let's move on to the Sognia Fjord, the deepest fjord on the highway at over 1.3 kilometers deep, creating an enormous challenge for engineers. A conventional suspension bridge built for the Sognia Fjord would need to be twice as long as the existing record holder, and would have to be three times longer than Golden Gate. And to support a bridge that size, the two towers at the end would have to be 450 meters tall, 150 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower. So engineers have proposed three different designs, a suspension bridge as previously described, a floating bridge, and a submerged floating tunnel. The floating bridge proposed here would be different from the Bjornafjord bridge. It will be a triple span suspension bridge with two mid towers floating on 75 meter wide pontoons anchored to the seafloor with special lines. And the third design is the extraordinary submerged floating tunnel concept that would be the first of its kind. The tunnel will consist of two 4 km concrete tubes floating 20 meters below the surface, anchored by pontoons, allowing for marine traffic to pass through. I couldn't find any sources confirming if a design has been selected yet, but I hope they choose the floating tunnel. Alright, next is the Northfjord crossing that will be a 1.8 km 4 lane suspension bridge. The bridge will be anchored by two 250 towers and is set for construction starting in 2024 or 2025. The bridge is relatively straightforward compared to the others, so now let's head over to the Vartnaus Ford crossing. This crossing is actually not part of the project because it was completed back in 2008 with the Eichsen Tunnel. Until the Rogfast Tunnel is complete, the Eichsen is the deepest undersea tunnel in the world at over 280 meters below sea level. The construction required 1,300 tons of explosives and excavating over 600,000 cubic meters of rock. Eichsen connects 40,000 residents in the region with the rest of the country. Okay, onto the Sulia Fjord crossing measuring 4 kilometers long. The Sulia Fjord has two proposed solutions. The first is a conventional suspension bridge. The mid tower for the suspension bridge proposal would be anchored to the seafloor 400 meters below the surface. And the second proposal is a submerged floating tunnel concept similar to the one proposed for the Sognia Fjord. So between the Sulia Fjord and the Sognia Fjord, hopefully one of the submerged tunnel proposals will be selected. Alright, next is the Romsdal Fjord crossing. This crossing is epic, it will replace two ferry trips and consist of a 16 km undersea tunnel and a 2 km suspension bridge. The tunnel will be comprised of twin two-lane tubes similar to the Rogfast tunnel. And the bridge will be the longest in Norway, its main span will be the third largest single span in the world. 
All right, next is the Yulsanya crossing, which is 1.6 kilometers long and over 500 meters deep. I'm a little disappointed because this crossing has little information about it, but it will involve an almost two kilometer suspension bridge. But I found out that the Norwegian government has signed a contract to have preliminary surveys completed. All right, now on to the final crossing, the Halsia Fjord. The Halsia Fjord is challenging for engineers because of its size and because there are no islands to work with. This was disappointing as well because I couldn't find specific proposals for this crossing, but based on this technology chart from the government website, possible solutions include a suspension bridge, flo a floating bridge, and a submerged floating tunnel. So for a lot of the crossings, scientists will be collecting data for the next few years before the government decides on proposals. You see, the engineers need to know the precise conditions that the bridge and or tunnels will face, and this will help them determine the best proposal. But there's no doubt that once Norway's superhighway is complete, it will be one of the most, if not the most complex highway in the world. I want to thank George Santos for requesting this topic. I had no clue about this project, and it was so fun to make this video. And that's why I created this series, because I love learning new things, and I created it so we can explore topics that we normally don't cover here on this channel. So to keep this series going, I need your help. Please send me your ideas for interesting topics that are different from what we normally cover. The more random, the better. Aside from that, I'm open to anything, history, art, you name it. And to my fellow space fans, I will be posting a special video next Sunday about Mars. I can't wait to share it with you guys. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe and I'll see you on the next journey.